Number 10. Plain in the Mountains In the remote Himalayan mountains of India, a World War II plane that has been missing for 80 long years was just discovered. It was a C-46 transport aircraft with a total of 13 people on board. The plane left Kunming in the south of China and then vanished during a particularly bad storm in the mountains. This was in the first week of 1945. After it vanished off the radar, it was never seen again, and nobody ever found the bodies of the passengers. The transport aircraft simply ceased to exist. It was an adventurer from the U.S. named Clayton Cools who led the only successful mission to the peaks of the mountains to find and photograph the airplane. The whole expedition was incredibly dangerous, especially since just a little while earlier, three local hunters died from hypothermia while traversing the same mountain range. They were caught in an unexpected September snowstorm and froze to death. Clayton and his team discovered the C-46 buried in the snow and were able to identify it by its tail number, although they never did find any of the bodies of the missing men on board the plane. Number 9. Wrecked in Papua New Guinea A man named Justin Talon works with the Pentagon to help recover and identify soldiers who went MIA during World War II. Specifically, he helps hunt down crashed airplanes and ruined vehicles that went missing during the war in some of the more exotic places in the world. Over the past 20 years, he's visited the island nation of Papua New Guinea dozens of times in his search. He's waded through swamps infested with crocodiles to photograph and archive crashed airplanes. Unfortunately, Talon isn't able to officially comment on the over 80 different pieces of wreckage that he's discovered, but he can talk about some of the ones he's found in Papua New Guinea. One was a Martin B-26 Marauder that Talon found slowly sinking into a muddy swamp. He believes the aircraft was forced to make an emergency landing during the war. The pilots then had to march through the jungle until they were able to contact civilization. And this is only one of the dozens of planes that crashed and vanished into the island's dense jungles during the war. Number 8. The Blacklist At the beginning of the war, Adolf Hitler was planning to invade the UK and have it completely occupied by the fall of 1940. This would no doubt have very much changed the tide of war and maybe even the outcome, but it never happened. France crumbled like a soggy birthday cake and Hitler just kind of hoped the British would submit. They never did, and we all know the outcome. But here's something crazy. Police in Britain and the secret organization MI5 were fully expecting an invasion. They came up with a blacklist of 720 Britons that they thought might help Nazi Germany if they tried to invade. The list was filled with people important enough to cause harm and questionable enough to side with the fascist army. Nearly 80 years later, we know some of the names of the people on the list. Some were teachers, some were shopkeepers, others were farm laborers and factory workers. Some were even powerful retired officers in the British Army. Sir Oswald Mosley was one of them, the leader of the British Union of Fascists. He was considered so dangerous in the case of a German invasion that he was imprisoned and his political party was torn apart and banned from ever reforming. Number 7. A Toxic Shipwreck about six miles off the coast of Sweden, there's a shipwreck at the bottom of the North Sea. It's called the Skateren, and it was destroyed 80 years ago. After all these decades underwater, it's considered the most dangerous shipwreck in Sweden. This is because the Swedish Navy investigated the wreckage and discovered that it had a huge crack in its hull. The crack is in danger of widening, which could cause oil to pour into the ocean. It's considered a toxic shipwreck, deteriorated and on the brink of unleashing an estimated 110,000 gallons of oil. The ship originally sank in 1942. It was part of Norway's commercial fleet during the early days of World War II. As Germany began to take control of the Baltic region, Norway secretly allowed 10 of their best ships, including this one, to move towards Britain. But only two made it to British waters. Six were sunk by the Germans and two of them were destroyed by their own crew to keep out of German hands. As for all that oil waiting to be dumped in the ocean, Sweden says they've started to drain it. However, we don't know how long that will take or how much oil it will successfully remove. Number 6. Shoichi Yokoi Shoichi Yokoi was the last Japanese soldier to surrender. In the 1940s, Yokoi couldn't handle the possibility of being captured and turned into a prisoner of war, so he hid in the jungles of Guam. He stayed in those jungles until somebody found him in January of 1972. He returned to his country after three decades of living like a monkey in the jungle. He was literally hiding out in the wild, thinking a war was still raging. He had originally fled into the trees when the American forces arrived in August of 1944. He was one of roughly 5,000 Japanese soldiers who refused to surrender, preferring to become prisoners instead. By the time the war was over in September of 1945, there were an estimated 130 Japanese soldiers still hiding in the jungle. Shoichi Okoi was the last soldier standing. In 1972, he did not go willingly. 
he had cemented himself in that jungle and would have stayed there until his death. It was only when he was overpowered by a pair of local fishermen that he finally surrendered and was sent back to Japan. He lived a long life, dying of a heart attack at the age of 82 in 1997. Do you think hiding in the jungle for three decades was a brave show of national pride or just pure idiocy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Number 5. Secret Submarine A secret sunken submarine was discovered by maritime archaeologists and turned into a virtual reality experience. The submarine is the I-124 Mine Layer No. 52. It served the Imperial Japanese Army until being sunk by the Allies in 1942. Its sinking saw the death of 80 crew members, with the submarine falling to the very bottom of the ocean. Before it was destroyed, the Japanese Army had used it to lay mines in the ocean off the coast of the Philippines. These days, diving down to this mysterious wreck is not possible for everybody. The wreckage site is controlled quite strictly. To give ordinary people a glimpse at the spooky underwater wreckage, the Australian Institute of Marine Science stepped up. They mapped the wreckage completely by using the newest remote sensing equipment in 2021. They mapped every last inch of the submarine and then put it into a VR experience. Now you can swim around the shipwreck without even getting your feet wet. Number 4. The Reindeer Army In World War II, the Soviet Army forced around 1,000 indigenous reindeer herders in Siberia to surrender their reindeer. It was part of their reindeer army between 1941 and 1944. The reindeer didn't actually fight in the battles, but were used to transport supplies shipped from North America to troops on the battlefield. The reindeer were used as pack animals, which actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. To get valuable supplies from one place to another in the frigid northern wilderness, there was no better animal than the reindeer. Sadly, this proved detrimental to the reindeer population. Research from the Arctic Institute of North America has shown the number of reindeer fell dramatically between 1939 and 1945. Somewhere around 220,000 reindeer died in the war effort, either from being overworked or from being turned into food to feed the hungry soldiers. Now, near just about every major battlefield along the Russian front, you can find heaps of reindeer bones buried in the mud. Number 3. The Ark Royal The Ark Royal was named after the flagship vessel in the fleet that defeated the Spanish Armada in 1588. The ship was designed in September of 1935, then commissioned in December of 1938. It was, for the 30s, one of the most impressive pieces of naval technology in history. It was the first aircraft carrier Britain made specifically to be an aircraft carrier. It had hangars designed to be an integral part of the ship's hull, rather than added on to it after construction was over. The flight deck had catapults, arresting cables, and the ship had massive dual-purpose guns, turrets, and machine guns. It was a force to be reckoned with that could carry 70 aircraft. In 1941, the Ark Royal helped track down and sink the most fearsome German battleship in history, the Bismarck. But in November of that same year, the carrier's luck ran out. It was returning from a convoy mission to Malta when a German submarine snuck up on it and blew its starboard side open with a single torpedo. The torpedo ripped a hole beneath the waterline and the ship started sinking immediately. The crew was ordered to abandon ship with only one fatality. The ship split in half and still sits 3,500 feet deep, 30 miles from the coast of Gibraltar. It wasn't seen again by human eyes until 2002 when divers with the BBC found it. Number 2. Lost Letter A letter from World War II has just been delivered nearly 80 years after it was originally sent. It was workers at a distribution facility for the U.S. Postal Service in Pittsburgh that spotted the letter in their archives. It was written in December of 1945 by a man named John Gonsalves, an army sergeant. At the time he wrote the letter, he was just 22 years old. He had sent it to his mom three months after the war officially ended and was stationed in Germany. The workers at the postal office realized the letter needed to be delivered. The issue was that it had been too long, the soldier's mother was already dead, and so too was the soldier. Yet they were able to track down his widow, a woman named Angelina, and deliver the letter to her. The contents of the letter weren't all that surprising. The soldier wanted to let his mother know he didn't like the food in Germany, but he was in good health. He also told his mother that he would be seeing her soon, and he did. He was married to Angelina for 61 years and only died in 2015. He made it back to the U.S., but his letter somehow got stuck in purgatory. Number 1. A Lost Dog Tag Assistant Professor Melissa Pijos at Valdosta State University received a rather strange email from a woman in France. The woman claimed that she discovered her father's dog tag while out hiking in the rural Fontainebleau forest. There was a battle here in World War II between the Americans and the Germans to liberate the French. Sometime during the battle, Melissa's father, Pete Pijos, lost his dog tag. Somebody probably stepped on it, it got smashed beneath the dirt, and there it laid for the better part of a century. 
After receiving the dog tag from a generous French stranger, Melissa worked up the courage to make an unexpected journey. She flew across the world and walked through the forest trail in the same place where the dog tag was found. For Melissa, it was a profound feeling to literally walk in the footsteps of her father where he had fought in battle over 70 years before. Number 10. The HMVS Cerberus The HMVS Cerberus is the only intact colonial warship in Australia. This strange, rotten vessel may have never seen any real legit action, but it's been a part of Australia since before it was even a country. The ship was named Cerberus after the ferocious three-headed dog that guards the entrance to Hades, aka Hell. The 225-foot-long warship was built in 1870 for the colony of Victoria. It was actually the first breastwork monitor, an innovation of designer Edward James Reed. The ship included a central armored structure that contained rotating gun turrets, funnels, the bridge, and all the other necessary operational pieces. This both lessened the chance that the ship would be sunk by large breaking waves and also placed its weapons at a strategically elevated height. But those weapons were never actually tested. Yes, the Cerberus once served in the Victorian naval forces in the days when Australia was still a British colony, but almost a century ago in 1924, there was no more use for the ancient vessel and it was just left off the coast of Black Rock. The ship was sold for a measly price of around $400, but the person who purchased the ship simply stripped all the valuable metal and then sold the hull for $150. The ship was then scuttled in Half Moon Bay in 1926 to be used as a breakwater. There was some talk about removing the ship from in front of what now stands as the Black Rock Yacht Club, but that's never going to happen. The HMVS Cerberus has been deemed too important of a historical attraction, even if it is slowly turning into an ugly trash heap. Number 9. Shipwreck at the Bottom of the Lake Scuba diver Scott Hill is a retired captain for the Rochester City Police Department. In 2014, he went diving at Canandaigua Lake in New York, never expecting to solve a mystery. But as he was exploring the underwater world of the lake, he came across something that had been lost for over a century. According to Scott himself, the visibility in the lake that day was incredible, with the water looking just like glass. When he reached the northern end of the lake, he could see pretty much to the bottom in perfect clarity. Thanks to such great visibility, he spotted a shipwreck. Scott didn't know what shipwreck he had found at first. He had to go back home and do some pretty serious research, and also a few more dives to make sure he was actually correct. As it turned out, he had discovered the Seneca Chief, a steel yacht that arrived at the lake in 1887, but the yacht only lasted shy of two decades. It was towed deep into the water and sunk on purpose for outliving its usefulness in 1896. It sat at the bottom of the lake ever since, with nobody even knowing it was there. Number 8. The Lost Village of Kuran the underwater village of Kuron has been lost for seven long decades, but after 70 years submerged, it reappeared briefly in 2021. Locals were quite shocked to see the ruins of this mysterious town for the first time since it was submerged in 1950. All that time underwater has done so much damage that the ruins look far older than they really are. For the brief time the village was visible, it looked like a soggy medieval town that had been abandoned five centuries ago. How cool is that? The village of Kuron is located in Italy. It was submerged on purpose to create an artificial lake. The locals obviously weren't too happy about it, but the project moved forward anyway. 150 families, equaling about 1,000 people, were immediately displaced by floods. The only reason it became exposed last year is because construction crews had to drain the lake to perform maintenance. After they were done fixing whatever the issue was, the lake was flooded once more and the village became submerged again. Number 7. Lost Wedding Band 
Teenager Georgia Morris was snorkeling at Redgate Beach in Western Australia during a terrible heat wave. There were plenty of other people swimming in the water too. It was a very busy day and everyone was just trying to beat the heat. As Georgia was making her way out of the water after a good swim, a glint of something caught her eye. Like Smeagol finding the ring, she dove to the bottom of the surf and pulled a glittering ring out of the sand. She showed it to her mom, who told her it was probably somebody's wedding ring. So many people swim in that area, it wouldn't be surprising if someone had lost their precious ring. So Georgia took the inscription written on the ring and posted it on their local community Facebook group. It didn't take long for someone to reach out. A couple messaged Georgia and said they lost that very ring 18 years before. It was Mark Dittmar who'd lost his wedding band back when his wife was still pregnant with her son who is now 19 years old. It was shocking for them to be reunited with a lost wedding band after almost two decades. They had never thought they'd see it again. Number 6. Sunken Whiskey An underwater treasure hunt ended in the discovery of some very old whiskey at the bottom of the lake. Dave Davidson, Dieter Mueller, and Adam Bloxel went diving in Otter Lake to find a lost stash of whiskey that went missing in 1964. According to Dieter, the whiskey was lost when his neighbor crashed a boat into the dock late in the middle of the night. Dieter tried to locate the bottles when he was a teenager, but never managed to find them. Now, as an old man, he decided to take one more stab at finding the whiskey, and he brought a few friends along for the trip. A total of three whiskey bottles were brought up from the bottom of the lake. The labels had disintegrated, but it was still good stuff. And because the whiskey was lost in 1964, most likely aged 12 years at the time, it would now be nearly 70 years old and that much more delicious. Would you drink whiskey found at the bottom of a lake? I know I would. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button before the end of the video. Number 5. Bell Island Mine The Bell Island Mine is one of the most unorthodox places a person can go diving. It was just recently that a local diving adventure company called Ocean Quest took an interest in the mine. The company, based in Newfoundland, will now start taking their customers on epic journeys through the flooded mine in the middle of Conception Bay. It's epic, creepy, and not for those who are easily spooked. The mine itself is freaky enough without strapping a mask onto your face and breathing through a tube while swimming through it. It was originally closed in the 1960s, but the section open for exploration was originally closed in 1949. There's still rails inside, iron ore cars, and tools left behind. If this all sounds dangerous, that's because it is. The company had been planning to take tourists deep into the flooded mines for years, but an American diver's death here in 2007 derailed their plans. The diver named Joe Steffen died from an air embolism while exploring the lost mine and was dead before he hit the surface. Number 4. Scotland's Atlantis Underwater archaeologists have found over 200 mysterious objects in the North Sea off the coast of Scotland. These objects are part of Scotland's own Atlantis, an underwater world by the name of Doggerland. This mysterious land was once above water, a bridge connecting the United Kingdom to Europe. It was home to tens of thousands of people before sea levels rose and it was lost forever, turning the United Kingdom into an island and separating it from Europe. Researchers believe it was an enormous tsunami that drowned the whole area 8,200 years ago. Throughout history, fishermen have been dredging up random objects in the area. They've found skulls of humans, the bones of mammoths, and even fossilized hyena poop stuck in their fishing nets. More recently, archaeologists went searching for their very own artifacts. They've now discovered a deer bone with an arrowhead still stuck in it, a piece of a young male Neanderthal skull, along with heaps of prehistoric tools and weapons. There's now no doubt that a rich community lived here in Doggerland, but that they all met their untimely fate at the watery hands of a devastating tsunami. Though, still, researchers can't say exactly how big the settlements here were, nor just how many people were living in the area when it was hit by a wall of water. Number 3. 
Artifacts from the Song Dynasty During the Song Dynasty of China, between 960 and 1279, a cargo ship was lost in the depths of the South China Sea. It sank to around 70 feet below sea level, where it remained unseen by human eyes until it was discovered in 2007 by archaeologists. Ever since, divers have been recovering pieces of its lost cargo. It's ended up being one of the most impressive ancient vessels ever explored. Not only is it amazingly preserved, but it's huge, and its amazing relics are seemingly limitless. Archaeologists have found all sorts of stuff, from gold, silver, and copper pieces of treasure. They've also discovered pots and bowls produced by kilns throughout China, in places like Fujian and Zhejiang. What makes these things so fascinating is that many of the artifacts still have the names of the shops from which they were sold written on them. It's like finding ancient pieces of jewelry with the tags still attached. Number 2. The Yankees Minor League Stadium In 2021, the Yankees Minor League Stadium in New Jersey was lost completely underwater. It happened overnight during a sudden storm. It was the aftermath of Tropical Storm Ida, and it completely submerged the TD Bank ballpark in Bridgewater Township. The playing field, the spectator stands, and even the parking lot. The water did recede after the storm, but the stadium sustained major damage. For those living in the area, they never imagined they would see the day when an entire stadium ended up underwater, like in some post-apocalyptic movie. And yet, it happened, and it could happen again. Next time, the water may not recede. Next time, the entire New Jersey shoreline could find itself in the same position as Scotland's Doggerland 8,000 years ago. A watery graveyard. That's a scary thought. Number 1. Captain Cook's Endeavour Just off the coast of Rhode Island in the United States, the Australian National Maritime Museum claims to have found the lost ship of the famous Captain Cook. We're talking about the HMB Endeavour. This was the vessel used by explorer Captain James Cook to reach Australia and New Zealand on a journey from 1768 to 1771. According to the director of the museum, Kevin Sumption, he and his team have been looking at all the 18th century shipwrecks near Rhode Island, where they believe the Endeavour sank. They've been investigating the area since 1999. They've looked at the archaeological evidence and historical records, and now they feel confident that one specific piece of wreckage is the boat they've been searching for all along. The museum says only about 15% of the vessel remains today, with the rest of it having been destroyed by two centuries underwater. However, US researchers are not so sure. They have slammed the museum as making the announcement prematurely. They say there is no factual evidence that the piece of wreckage at the bottom of the ocean is in fact the Endeavour. They say it could be any boat from the 18th century, but the Australians are standing by their announcement. Number 10. Boat Graveyard there's a strange boat graveyard on the shores of the River Blavé in France, over 50 fishing boats slowly decaying in the mud. Some of the oldest have been there since the 1920s, before World War II. The oldest have already deteriorated beyond recognition, leaving behind soggy skeletons. The entire coastline here is literally swamped with broken, derelict vehicles. The thing is, most people don't even know where they came from. They've just been abandoned through the years, and they always seem to mysteriously wash up right here on this beach in Kerhervy. This area of France is known for its fishing. Because of that, it's not too surprising that so many fishermen have left their vessels behind in the unofficial graveyard. The really surprising thing is that nobody's ever done anything to get rid of them. The ships just keep piling up, creating a beachfront of broken boats. Number 9. The Moonfish On a beach in Oregon, a 100-pound monster was found lying in the sand. Beachgoers were truly amazed at the fascinating creature, truly enormous with orange, red, and blue coloring covered in white polka dots. It was like nothing they'd ever seen before, and for good reason. The monster was in fact a moonfish, also known as an opa. It was discovered on the shore of Sunset Beach back in July, hundreds of miles from where it should have been. This thing got lost in the ocean, wandered from its natural habitat, and wound up very far from home. The moonfish has a flat and circular body, looking almost like a huge coin. Its eyes are golden, its face is silvery, and it can grow to be around 6 feet in length. 
Beachgoers didn't know what to think of the bizarre creature, so they posted pictures online and staff with a local seaside aquarium came to recover the remains. The fish was unfortunately dead already, but still in really good condition. They normally live off the coast of California and around Hawaii, and it's very rare for one to wind up so far north. One of the possible explanations is that the warming ocean temperatures have caused it to leave the waters around California because they're simply too hot. It's now moving into colder waters and occasionally getting stuck on northern beaches. Number 8. Deep Sea Lightbulb Fish On a beach in California, witnesses came across an elusive nightmare from the deep ocean. You've probably heard of this monster before. It's a terrifying predator known as the anglerfish. This is the scary fish with a light bulb dangling in front of its massive teeth to trick other fish into swimming directly into its mouth. Normally, such an abhorrent creature can't be seen unless you dive over 3,000 feet deep in the ocean. There, over 200 species of anglerfish are distributed throughout the world. Somehow, one of them ended up all the way in the sand of Crystal Cove State Park. Nobody knows how it got there, and none of the staff at the park had ever seen one in such great condition before. The unusual specimen was taken to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. That's how rare a discovery of this magnitude is. Anglerfish just aren't seen on the surface, especially not in perfect condition. The female anglerfish is able to grow around two feet in length, but the males of the species are quite a bit smaller, growing to only about an inch long. This is because in order to reproduce, the male bites onto the female and becomes a sexual parasite. Number 7. The Superbug A deadly superbug has been found on a remote island beach. It's the first time scientists have ever witnessed this particular organism living in the wild, and on the beach of all places. Let me give you some background. The superbug, named Candida auris, appeared in hospitals around the world about 10 years ago. According to Dr. Arturo Casadevall from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, the bug was a medical mystery. Nobody knew where it came from, and it especially confused doctors in Japan when it was first identified in a patient there in 2009. The bug is a type of fungus that spread across the globe and appeared on at least three continents at the same time. It caused bloodstream infections and proved to be resistant to antifungal drugs. Scientists are usually able to identify where these types of bugs come from in the world, but this has never been found in any natural environment. Related species have been seen in plants, but not C. auris. Scientists in India finally found the bug hiding in tropical beach sand on the Andaman Islands. This is a place where there's almost no human activity. Scientists are still trying to figure out how it made it from this remote beach into hospitals across the globe. Number 6. Shovelnose Guitarfish A shovelnose guitarfish was discovered by Eleanor Morgan as she was walking her dogs along Ocean Beach early on a Saturday afternoon. The San Francisco State University graduate had no idea what kind of creature she was dealing with when she came upon the corpse, comparing it to the spawn of a monster from a horror movie. This thing had a very long and pointy snout, it was a little over three feet in length, and it looked sick. Eleanor was more curious than anything. She snapped a couple photos and posted them online to see if someone could identify the creature. Some guessed it was a giant squid, others were positive it was an alien. But finally, a researcher from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute identified it as the shovelnose guitarfish, so named because its body looks like a guitar. It's a foraging predator closely related to rays, except it doesn't have a venomous barb. How in the world did such a remarkable beast end up on the beach? It's actually not as interesting as you might think. These creatures are quite common along the coastline, living in shallow waters on the sea floor. It must have died and got pushed onto the beach during high tide. What would you do if you found a creepy fish sliming it up on the beach? Would you take pictures of it and move on or put it in a bucket and take it home with you for dinner? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe before the end of the video. Number 5. Smuggler's Boat A local man in San Diego was strolling along his favorite beach trail when he came across an abandoned boat. It was floating at the edge of the sand, looking incredibly suspicious. As an active member of his community, the man was concerned. He'd never seen it before and he didn't like the look of it. He phoned the police and they sent some deputies and lifeguards to get the boat before it could float away. When they looked inside, they found evidence that it may have been used as part of a human smuggling operation. They found life vests, backpacks, and gas cans. Plus, the fishing boat itself was barely more than a raft. It looked very similar to the dozens of other suspicious fishing boats that have been found all along the San Diego coast in recent years. It's more popular than you may think. The Coast Guard and Customs and Border Protection are always investigating abandoned boats found on beaches in San Diego. Some say that in recent years, with all the promises of building a border wall, people have taken to crossing the border in nondescript fishing boats. They abandon them on the beach and then make a break for it. Number 4. Carved Stone Pillar In the Canadian province of British Columbia, a huge stone pillar was found on the beach. 
It was absolutely enormous, weighing over 200 pounds and covered in sea scum. It was carved to look like a face and nobody had any idea where it came from. It was just there, lying in the sand as if it had fallen from the sky. The artifact has been studied over the past year since it was found in the summer, and the Royal BC Museum has now confirmed it to be an indigenous cultural treasure. Conservationists are currently working to preserve the stone, which had been submerged in seawater for quite some time and covered in algae. Scientists at the museum believed the pillar had probably once stood at the edge of a cliff along the beach, perhaps as part of some larger complex for weather ceremonies. But hundreds, maybe even thousands of years ago, the cliffs crumbled and the pillar was lost under the rocks of the beach. It was only now that the beach has shifted that the amazing long-lost artifact has been revealed. Number 3. Plague of Seagulls In the UK, a dog walker was strolling along a beach in Cornwall when they discovered something gruesome. They came across the corpses of 30 dead seagulls as if they had been shoveled off the back of a truck. According to what the dog walker told local news, it was very disturbing. She does come across the occasional dead bird, but she's never seen so many in one place. But don't worry, things get worse. The DERFA Animal and Plant Health Agency went to investigate the mysterious deaths of the birds and found that most of the gulls had avian influenza. You probably know it better as bird flu or H5N1. It's a highly pathogenic flu virus which decimates entire bird populations and is known for infecting humans. There's no cause for alarm right now, but it is pretty scary. The authorities in the UK have been sure to let their citizens know that if they see any dead birds on the beach, stay away. Number 2. Seminole War Artifacts A lucky teenager named Nick was looking for treasure near Corrigan's shipwreck south of Turtle Trail Beach in Florida. Visibility that day was crystal clear, so good that he didn't even need his metal detector. He was just walking along the beach about 1,500 feet from the main shore, sifting with his hands through potholes. Even so far from the main beach, the water was only 10 feet deep. That was when he discovered a very rare gold coin from 1715. The coin had almost definitely belonged to one of the local shipwrecks. Back in 1715, a fleet of Spanish ships were sunk by a hurricane and sent to the bottom of the ocean. Their remains can now be found all the way from Sebastian to the St. Lucie nuclear plant. But finding a coin buried in the sand is incredibly rare. Nick estimated his coin's worth at $10,000, and that's only one. There are still thousands of gold coins missing from the Spanish fleet. Number 1. Dinosaur Footprint A little girl was walking with her family on a beach in Wales one day when she noticed something strange on a slab of stone. It looked like a handprint, only one made by some kind of a terrible monster. She called her parents, who immediately realized they were staring at a fossilized dinosaur footprint. Researchers with the National Museum of Wales descended on the beach like fossil scavengers. They took the rock back to their laboratory for analysis. They were able to date the print as coming from 220 million years ago. It turned out to be one of the best examples of a dino print anywhere in the United Kingdom. It's incredibly detailed, with the pads of the feet and the tips of the claws still visible. What kind of creature left the track behind? It was some kind of bipedal dinosaur with three toes. It must have been living at the beginning of the Triassic period, when the UK was still a desert with salty lakes. But other than that, researchers don't know too much about the creature. It left the footprint behind only 10 million years after dinosaurs first evolved, meaning it was most likely one of the first major dino predators. Have you ever found any prehistoric footprints on the beach? If you have, let us know all about it in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks so much for watching and come back soon for more awesome videos right here on American Eye.